What's up everyone, in this video I'm going to share three tips to help you land that first Upwork client. If you are someone who is struggling to get your first Upwork client, if you are not sure why you're sending all these proposals out and why you're not getting any responses back or hearing back from clients, hopefully these three tips will help you land that first client on Upwork. If that's what you need, stick around. Hey minions, if you're new to the channel and you like what I have to say, then be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you never miss a video. Only do this if you like what I have to say and if you want to hear more about freelancing, entrepreneurship, and personal world domination. For those who don't know me, I'm Lex DeVille, and on this channel we help you break the chains that bind your mind to build a freelance empire. We share lots of Upwork tips and tutorials and things like that, so if you're new, consider subscribing. Today's video is three tips to help you land clients on Upwork faster, to help you land faster Upwork clients. Don't know, getting my keywords all out of whack there. Three tips to help you land clients on Upwork faster. And uh, we're going to go ahead and dive right in with that with number one being that you need to be honest. Honesty is one of the most important traits a freelancer can have when it comes to getting clients to respond to your proposals, when it comes to having a good experience working with clients on Upwork. And starting from the proposal, if you're some, one of those people who's sending out proposals and you're not getting responses, a lot of the times it's because uh, clients like myself feel like there's something off about your proposal. Something you've said doesn't seem quite right. And when you make stuff up, when you tell little white lies, little fibs, something about it just seems to come through in your proposal it like stands out to us and it's because we're trying not to get screwed so the thing that we value most is people who are honest people who we can trust people who aren't likely to try and scam us and this is particularly true for new clients it's really hard for new clients because they're not used to working with people from different countries and they just are kind of suspicious in general and it's just human nature so being honest is everything and it's that means being honest about your experience your education how many clients you've worked with you know what just what you can and can't do all of this honesty is going to come through and the more honest you are clients can feel it it comes through in your words so if you are someone who is telling lies if you're making up stories if you're just saying stuff all of that stuff just kind of shines through to clients and we can read it it's it's like we read it in between the lines. It's subtext. It's in between your words. So it's nothing in, nothing specific that you're saying, or maybe it is something specific you're saying, but mostly it's how you're saying it. And when we read it, it comes across a certain way to us. And we're like, eh, this guy's not really trustworthy. And I have a gut feeling that if I work with this person, it's not going to be a good experience for me. So therefore, I'm going to move on to the next person and see if they are honest. So number one is going to be honesty because without being honest, with clients, you're just not going to get responses to most of your, of your proposals. And even if you did manage to get a response, let's say even if you managed to get hired, you're still going to have trouble later on. It comes back to bite you if you're dishonest because you have to support what you said with your work and with the things that you deliver. So if you say that you've got a whole bunch of experience in something like copywriting and then you deliver really bad copywriting, and even if you think it's good, the client knows. They know what they're looking for. And if you can't deliver that on the back end after you've made up those stories, then it's really going to come back and bite you in the form of clients asking for refunds, uh, clients leaving negative feedback, things that are going to drop your job success score and your ratings. And that's going to cause you to not get clients in the future, which means you're not going to have an income. You're not going to have money. So it's much, much better to just be honest from the start about where you are, what experience you have, what education you have, and just tell the truth. And that's going to help you get more responses and have a better experience on Upwork. Number two is to stop applying to every single gig you come across. This is probably, this probably should have been the number one thing that like stops people from getting responses. But I don't know how many of you know this, I don't apply to every gig that comes across my desktop just because it says copywriter on it or article writer or something I'm interested in does not mean that I apply to that gig. I wait 30 days, 40 days, sometimes it's two months, sometimes it's longer. Sometimes it's just a month, sometimes it's a week, but I'm looking for the exact right client. I need to know that we are an exact right, perfect match. And what does that mean for me? That means 
I want to work with this person. I like what they're working on. I like what their project looks like. It looks like something I'm interested in. I feel confident that I can do this job and I can actually do a really good job on it. I feel like I like the style of the proposal and the client and what they're saying. I feel like they've got a pretty good budget and I can probably get high pay from them. All of these things are factoring into whether or not I apply. If they're not uh, the exact right person for me, if I don't get the right vibes from them, if I feel like I don't know that I can deliver what they're looking for, all of these things are going to say, hey, this probably isn't the one for me. I want the next one. And the reason I do this is because it's way, way easier to get full time pay as an Upwork freelancer whenever you are only working with the exact right people for you, people who need someone at your experience level, people who like the things that you have to say or like your proposal and people who are just going to be they're going to be good fit a good fit for your personality and when that matches up and it takes time to find you have to filter through a lot of clients you've got to read job proposals you got to look through one after another until you find the exact right one and then when you find that person your proposal is going to stand out to them you're going to get more responses because your proposal stands out because you already know that you're a really good match you say i can do this job and it's a fit for me and my personality is probably a fit for them and therefore i'm going to apply and then it doesn't matter if there's 10 or 20 or however many proposals before you, it doesn't matter even if the job's been open for a few weeks, you can still get these clients to respond because you're just a better fit than everyone else. But if you're just a popping off proposals, spamming templates, sending all these proposals out to all these clients looking for small time gigs, that's what you're going to end up with is low pay and hopping from one job to the next, hoping for a win. You're going to increase your chances of getting negative feedback and negative ratings. You're going to increase your chances of a lower job success score because these clients aren't a perfect fit for you, which means when you deliver the work, it's not going to be, even if you get responses and get hired, the work you deliver is not necessarily going to be at their satisfaction level. And that's going to end up in negative reviews for you. So if you work only with the exact right people, you'll find clients who are willing to pay you higher rates because they like you as you are for what you do and the way you do it. And then one client can easily become a full-time income and multiple clients can become a really huge income for you. So that's what, that's the way I approach it. And that's the way I think that most freelancers should be thinking about this. It shouldn't be how many proposals did I send off today? It should be did I find a client today who really stood out to me as the exact perfect match? And if not, I'll keep looking because it's more important to find that client because they will pay you more and they'll pay you ongoing for much longer periods of time. The third thing has to do with your experience. So if you don't have experience and a lot of people, a lot of freelancers use this as an excuse for why they can't apply to gigs, why they can't get started. If you don't have experience, then you have to do something else to elevate your value in the eyes of clients. If you are, you don't have any experience at all in web design, then what else can you say to a client to get them to want to work with you? I mean, because if you're doing the other things, if you're being honest, that's already putting you at an elevated status in the client's eyes. If you are only applying to clients when you feel like you're an exact perfect match, then you shouldn't even really have to worry about not having experience because you're finding clients who meet who want what you have. They don't care if you have no experience. They don't care if you're new to freelancing or anything like that. So if you're applying to those clients, then you're going to get hired and you're going to have a good experience easily. Uh, if you don't have experience, though, there's always things that you can do. You can elevate your value by lowering your prices. Sometimes you can elevate your value by adding extra revisions. You can elevate your value by adding add on some extra thing. Like if I'm an article writer, instead of writing 10 articles for, I don't know, $100, maybe I offer to write double that maybe I offer 20 articles, or maybe I offer the first article free as an example. So there's different ways to elevate your value. But if you don't have experience in your skill, then you have to find you have to figure out what that thing is, that's going to raise you up, it's going to elevate your value over other freelancers in the eyes of the client, just enough that they will at least give you a response just enough that they will give you a chance. And when you do that, then you're going to be able to pick up some of these gigs and you're going to have, you know, it's not going to be so hard for you anymore. So when you combine these three things, you combine yourself finding ways to elevate your value, you are being honest with clients, and you are not applying to every gig, you're only applying to gigs when it's an exact perfect match for you, 
then this is how you build a system of full-time income on Upwork. It's how you get to that next level and it's how you start to make this into something that can actually sustain you. And if you look at freelancers from a lot of different countries who are not doing very well on Upwork, who are like not getting responses, they're not making full-time income, they are taking little scrap jobs for like five and ten dollars here and there, there's a reason for that. And the reasons are generally one of these th three things. They're not being truthful with clients. They're applying to all of the wrong clients or just at least not the right clients. And they're taking every little thing they can get because they're so afraid. There's a fear underlying all of this. There's like this fear of, you know, I have to get money or else I'm not going to be able to eat. But if you come from that place of like fear, it's going to fuel you into the wrong path. It's going to fuel you to go the wrong directions. You're going to say, oh, well, my family needs to eat this week. So I'm going to have to lie in order to get this client to pick me over other people. But that's not being value. That's not elevating your value to those clients. So it show, shines through and they skip you. And so you don't get any money or you apply to the wrong clients and you end up with negative feedback because they weren't very good fits for you. And now you can't get future clients. So you still have the same problem you had originally. And if you don't have experience and you're just using that as an excuse, well, there's ways around that too. And that will hold you back from making money on Upwork if you allow it to. All of this can be avoided. Just come from a place of value. Look for the right clients. Be honest. Stop making excuses for the love of God. Get out there and apply to the right people and prove that you can help them. And that's all there is to it. That's all I've got for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Lex DeVille. Subscribe below if you want more videos on freelance stuff. Comment below if you have any video suggestions or anything like that that you'd like me to talk about. I'll see you next time.